most of the people in my family didn't go to college. Um, I did, that's why I'm a businessman today, and I listened to my parents. But the one thing I haven't forgotten is that um, the passion back in those early days were the best time of my life, okay? So right now is the best time of your life. And it'll continue to be good. But anyways, to make a small story to get to the point, Sometimes it's like a drum roll, I just keep talking, so skip the beat and we'll move forward. But the bottom line is, my dad gave me a number one muskrat trap. We had a little crick right down to the side. It wasn't no further than that little truck over there. He sh took an apple. My dad was a coon hunter and deer hunter, and, but he wasn't a big time trapper, but my grandfather was and he taught him and he did take the time to, that's all he had to do was give me that number one long spring trap, show me how to drown that first muskrat, put that apple on a stick, and I checked that trap four times every night, every two and a half hours. They forced me to go to bed. I actually caught two or three muskrats within two days because I kept checking it. But lo and behold, I did the thing that every trapper shouldn't do. I over harvested. I killed every muskrat within a 200 yard radius because I that's all the range I had was 200 yards, so there wasn't many, many coons or muskrats left, but subsequently the business aspect of me made me barter for traps with uh, other school kids. The next thing you know, I had a dozen traps. You know, I traded something they thought was more available than a trap, so, uh, wow, I even got some extra people. So I guess we'll start now, and I was just kind of really trying to put some focus to this young guy because that's what it's about. I'm going to make sure that he gets the videos when we get done with the uh, presentation. And nice small crowd's going to make it nice because I'm going to be able to give something to everybody here. And I guess the old uh, saying, you know, flattery will get you everywhere. Well, come in to hear me listen and talk my passion. And, you know, some of you are already addicted. I got to speak to this young man before I started. And he's been doing it since he was six or seven, was it? Yeah. And he's pretty much hooked. And... I met a nice young lady today that's going to be a taxidermist. My dad was a taxidermist. I told her a story earlier about my dad. He's gone, but, you know, you guys came in just before when I was talking to this guy, talking about what it was all about. When I first started trapping and lived off the land, and um, no one ever went to college, and um, I did. And now is my, I'm trying to get back. So um, even though I work in the business environment, my passion's always trapping, and I haven't got to meet you yet, so maybe at the end we'll spend a little time and we'll roll a little long, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get this going as I talk some more, so, you know, it doesn't hurt to get a little excitement in it. And I want you to see a couple, the potential of the video. Some of you will have it, some of you will get it in the future. And um, the video is uh, about two hours, two and a half hours long. And, it's going to show you actual sets and it's going to show you what my customers have taught me, what I've learned from nature and my grandfather and, and reading magazines and basically 50 years of knowledge and I hope you all use it responsible and remember that you know when I started that story you know over 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 catching and uh, the main reason I'm putting this surge in the, this current this this next year I'm going to surge more than ever to make my get up my butt up and talk to people because fur prices have gone up and people that trap years ago think they know uh, how to trap now and they haven't done it for 30 years when all coons are $50 and greed's going to kick in and people are going to trap because they're going to do it for money because our country's in pretty tough shape but don't forget history. I mean the last time fur prices have actually were really really Hi, we're back in the depression. So let's hope history is not repeating itself. Let's learn from history. And uh, so let's get some excitement in and see if I can show a couple catches and get the blood flowing. And I can see you guys are a very attentive audience, and that's very much appreciated. Plus, you're not making me nervous. Sometimes people make me nervous because when you're a trapper, you're an isolated man. And when I was younger, I wasn't as outspoken as I am now and you learn that with time and five beautiful blondes and um, they're all beyond the teenage stage so um, that were daughters you know um, 
Pan does a thing with uh, patience. And patience is a thing with trapping. And, you know, in the audience I have a very veteran trapper there. And, uh, when I was shooting my video, he thought it was nothing when he had a triple on coyotes. And I'm like, dog, I just got done working my butt 18 hours a day and I didn't even get a double and you got a triple on coyotes. And he just shuck it off, you know, because he's a smooth character, but he's got a lot of wisdom. I still haven't got a triple on coyotes yet, but when I do, he lives in my town and I'm going to drag him out and show him what I got. What's a triple? Triple is three coyotes at one time within your vision. Okay. That trap, that trap, and that trap. Um, but basically this is the hocus pocus of the video and uh, um, I'm just going to keep talking but when the video first starts it's going to it's going to flip through some scenery uh, uh, with some catches and the environment I'm trapping here in Michigan and this particular video um, I chose the Asabo River does everybody know where the Asabo River is and the reason I chose it is I believe in efficiencies both in business we should run the country with efficiencies and I don't think that's the way it is but that's an opinion most of what I do is opinion take it for what it is but um, but those efficiencies mean that uh, I also wanted to produce a video that was interesting for folks and I work full-time so I wanted to do a water trapping video I want to do a, a uh, land video and that's the way I run my trap line every year. I have ever since I was got my driver's license Actually, my first driver's license wasn't even a driver's license It was a mini bike that I learned also how to repair small engines because we couldn't afford to keep my mini bike running but basically um, Those efficiencies is how I did my videos. We Checked the land sets up on the high banks while we were heading where we were going to get the boat to go down the river so subsequently the water uh, footage is the Asabo River and the shots that you see when you watch the canine video I tried to get as many catches as I could trying to get a fox where you want them to go is harder than where you should when you're really trapping you should go location where the traps are or where the tracks are the dung is there I tried to alter it a little bit so I set a few more traps to make the fox go where I wanted to which we, had, we managed to uh, achieve that um, but basically um, does everybody here know what a dirt hole set is? Okay. Not exactly. No. Okay. Um, of all the sets that you make, a set is when you take a trap and it, it has a name. It's a dirt hole set, there's a scent post set, and there's different sets, okay? But the dirt hole set is the number one set. Do you guys know what a dirt hole set is? You will after you see the video because I will repeat it. It's very good for beginners. And old pros, like the guy with the camera, you know, he's been a trapper for a long time. They'll understand. So the video has been made for uh, both beginning and experienced trappers. But essentially what a dirt hole set is, it's what you should use to trap fox, coyote, bobcat, uh, every land animal, okay? Now basically, the dirt hole set is a ticket to K90 success. Did I just come up with that today? No. I came up with that 30 years ago. Search the internet for a dirt hole set, ticket to canine success. Whose name do you think is going to be on the article? Okay? That's how long ago I wrote it and it was published in one of these magazines. Okay? Almost, and you know what? Things have changed since then. That's why I'm also doing presentations and going to start writing some new articles and doing videos. Techniques have gotten modernized, more humane, more efficient. And now with the search and prices, I'm not worried about how much I catch. I'm going to catch stuff no matter what. I'll take what everyone else leaves behind. I'll pay the smart ones. But basically, don't over harvest. Learn how to do a dirt hole set. What it is, is everybody seen a dog where he digs something up and he basically buries his food, goes back later. A canine is a dog. A fox is a canine. A coyote's a canine. A coon has that innate behavior. Subsequently, it can be made anywhere. You have some basic tools. So if you're a trapper, you need a trowel. That's so you dig the hole that simulates. That's the dirt hole. This isn't a hard thing. It just takes getting the concept, okay? The experienced trappers know I could sit here and talk for five hours about the techniques of a dirt hole set in improving your success. But to basically do it, don't try any of the other sets until you catch a fox or a coyote in a dirt hole set. Now I catch the most in a scent post set. 
which is when the fox or the coyote goes next to an obstacle, and what does the dog do? Marks his territory, okay? So it's no different with the canine, fox, coyote. So you learn to make those two sets. You can catch any fox, coyote that roams the woods. I'm surprised, I'm shocked that more folks aren't here because trapping is so important because we complain about the overpopulation of possums and coons when the fur prices are low, eating the eggs of ducks, pheasants, okay, all our issues. There's no rabbits left. Why? The coyotes are overpopulated, the fox are. Fur prices are low. Thank goodness now they're high so some of that population will go down. That's not the concern of the overkill. The overkill is going to be the muskrat and the beaver because they're not going to populate faster and it's, they're easier animals to catch. We are never going to annihilate the coyotes and the fox because they're too intelligent, okay? We only could wish we could be half as intelligent as, as those animals, in my opinion. But once again, I have an opinion, okay? They're learning to adapt to the changes in our environment. I question if we are. Um, I think I wrote back, I told you guys my age, and I ain't going to say it again, but I actually was a writer back even in school because when in second grade they asked us to write a congressman, I decided I was going to write the main congressman, and he sent me a packet about the ozone layer. Well, they're still talking about it today, but are we doing anything? Of course not. Well, I'm going to plant banana trees in 10 years is my prediction with the global warming, so maybe we should have listened way back then. I'm sure we will when stuff does change, but once again, I'll stop the opinions. Subsequently, trapping has changed. That warming here has caused what used to be winter trapping. You can't do winter trapping in the aspect it was. That's another reason for doing these videos. 30 years ago, I winter trapped because it was cold at night. You can make your snow sets. Now it thaws and it freezes. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? So now when you make your dirt hole set, you have to weatherproof it with glycol or glycerin to keep it from freezing, and it's hard to trap in the winter. So my suggestion, whether you're a skilled trapper like these folks over here, or a new trapper, get out when the weather's nice, enjoy it, and that's when you're going to catch most of your canines, okay? Now, time is going to be a constraint. So I got 15 minutes, I'm going to rock it along, okay? And I'm going to try to get some time to ask questions. You're more than welcome come afterwards and talk, and, and, or on the phones afterwards. And we're open to 11 o'clock at night, we've got professionals on the phone. I will always stop to help. If I can't help you at the time you call me, I'll get back to you. I drive back and forth from our grade to where I work in Oscoto, where PCS Outdoors is. I'm on the cell phone constantly trying to get back to customers for advice. So if I can't get to you immediately, I will. I do my best. But basically, um, I do anything I can to answer questions, and I want to see your success as a trapper. Um, but getting back now to speed it along, because take the drum roll, sometimes I get on a topic too long. But now, equipment-wise on this dirt hole set, it's very simple. You need a sifter so you don't have rocks. If there's rocks, when you bet you, you put, you have to bed your trap, okay? And I'm really speeding this along because a half an hour doesn't give us enough time, okay? You set your trap and it has to be treated, wax dyed. There's obviously the video, the internet can tell you how to do that. It's because these animals have great senses, far more than ours, okay? The nitty gritties of the positioning. Coyote, I have the hole here where the dirt hole is dug. I bed the trap. You, know, you dig the dirt out, you bed your trap down in. The trap pan is farther back because the neck of the coyote's longer when he smells down in the hole for the lure of the bait that you put there. Does this make sense? Okay. If you see tracks, and you should only set your traps when you see fresh sign. Because why would you set a trap if you don't see tracks in the sand and everything else? Don't waste your set and your time. Set your traps where the animals are. Location. If you don't know where to look, uh, get a video, mine or someone else's. It's basically you're going to find that sign where two trails or two natural waterways cross or, you know, areas that it's easy for them to travel and hunt for mice and small game and all these other items. So basically, one actually steps in your trap and it gets caught, okay? And there's a lot of stuff you got to read or look at videos to, you know, find the exact placements because we're cruising along in a half an hour. Once you catch them, you got to make sure you have a staking device. 
These here are the modern way. It used to be steel re-rod stakes. This gets driven in the ground with a tool, okay? When this is driven in the ground, you pull it. The surface area there doesn't let the animal pull it out, okay? This is what people used to use. A coyote can yank this up and down and pull it out of the ground and go running away, okay? This, they can. There's different configurations for different soils, uh, but basically these are very affordable. They're lightweight, like $8.95 a dozen. So it's not a high cost to hold your catch. Because if you can't hold it, you're not gonna keep it, and it's a waste, okay? Um, lures and baits. Um, if you think you want to use a lot of baits, I suggest you don't. That's the first instinct. You know, I'm going to take some, I shot a squirrel and I'm going to put that down in as bait, or I got some big bait and I'm going to stick it in there and the coyote's going to love it. It's going to get warm and thaw and it's going to get stinky and coyotes don't want to eat stuff that's rank if they don't have to, which you use as lures that are different times of the year, you would use a sexual lure during the January, February when they're breeding, or in the fall you would use a curiosity lure. They'll come to that scent. Remember, you gotta boil your traps, keep them clean. Well, they're gonna smell that little lure you put on some sheep wool and throw it down the bottom of the hole, okay? You don't need to, so what's gonna attract them, you're gonna set that dirt hole set where you see tracks inside, they're gonna see the hole with no lure or anything. One year, I actually uh, put some traps behind my house, but I wasn't gonna uh, bait them to, it got a little colder to make it, I was testing. And basically, I ended up doing awesome. Season was already open. I never even had a chance to put the bait in the hole. They just, the tracks were there, they seen the dirt hole, and they investigated it. You don't even need bait. Okay, you gotta make a good dirt hole set. It's the ticket to canine success, okay? Any questions on making a dirt hole besides understanding you have to read about it and that's what you should do. Until you can catch a fox or coyote, my recommendation is keep making dirt hole sets before you try whatever you find on YouTube or books or anything else because if you don't know the nature of the animal through what you see on a dirt hole set, you're gonna have difficulty in my opinion. Once again, it's my opinion, there might be some magic out there I don't know about, but in 50 years, no one's ever shared that magic with me, and I know a lot of people that share information. Any questions? Is everybody really getting it so I can go on? Okay, we only got 10 minutes. What do you, does anybody want me to talk about something? If you feel confident, you could get some more research and make a set. Any suggestions? Okay, you want me to keep winging it? Okay, seeing some smiles once in a while. I got some new people I didn't see come in when I was being active there. Are you? How far are you guys along as being trappers? Just starting out. I've been doing a couple of years. Okay, so you understand what I, the yeah. jargon I'm throwing in. Information age has made it wonderful. When I was first trying to learn, Hal Baker's North American Trapper book was the only one out there, pretty much. Okay, anybody read that book? Okay, good men. Okay, you got a good core. What was the name of the book? Trapping North American Fur Bearers by S. Stanley Halbaker. One of the finest trappers ever in my opinion. Okay? Likewise, if you guys look at my video, if you guys see something, I want to do future videos, okay? I'm going to go to Alaska probably next year, okay? I want to make those videos better. So if I don't hear back from you that what you don't like, how can I improve in the future and help other young trappers, okay? So it's important that we communicate. Um, made in America. I've been a supply dealer many, many years. This is a marble knife. I used to go to the shot show. That's in Las Vegas. Um, used to even go with these folks, okay? They're made in China now, okay? Whole story, don't know. But um, I was able to find this at uh, a booth today, okay? and buy it because it was made in America for I'm going to get this for my significant other because it means a lot. And I see this more and more and subsequently I'm getting a little old to be a manufacturer again but now I'm going to start manufacturing some stuff I see going overseas. And you know what? I got I don't know if I can keep hiring people with Obamacare. I just negotiated Blue Cross but I'm going to do my best guys. I'm not going to make everybody go part-time that works for me but guess what? 
and just say, I'm not going to do it because I can't run on part-time employees, okay? i got to have full-time employees, and I have to be treated just like I was when I worked with people. You know what I mean? So, um, now, other guys with ideas. That's what it's all about. I met another John. Besides having a great name, we got one problem with our name. Everybody wants to go to John. Call it the head, call it something else, but come on, guys. With the John. But John over here developed, look that up, John. Roger, come over here and give me that. John's helping me out on the camera. But every year, somebody, there's thousands of ideas. This young man, he's from Michigan. You'll see it on my site, his site. Tell me the proper name so I don't hack it. A sure set. A sure set. It's just a very good tool. It's going to simplify. Uh, this this item will, is, is attached right to your traps. It's going to allow you to be more efficient. Uh, this can be dropped under. We've been talking a lot about canines, but this is going to cost us a little bit into water traffic. So if it's frozen, you see a muskrat hut over here. Uh, you see a run under the ice. You can spud a hole. This is already like this, and I don't know how many of you have worked in the cold, but when you start spudding ice holes and everything else, your hands are cold, so it's kind of nice to have your gear ready to drop it right in the water. So, you know, I love it when I can salute a uh, young man that's come up with a good idea, and I was proud when he allowed me to be one of his distributors. So, um, I'm sure this is going to be a winning product, and he's priced it affordably, and just wanted to give mention there. That was the only other direct trapping supply person I met at this show, so um, it was a winner. Besides a, besides a trowel, a sifter, five gallon bucket, I suggest getting a backpack. Um, this is one that I actually do. Um, it's lightweight, it's got pockets, it was designed for trapping, okay? Of course, I even put my uh, information on there for marketing purposes. Now, um, this here is just another tool. I like this one because you can actually dig a hole. You're not carrying two tools. You can drive your stakes and stuff. Uh, but it's really, really basic equipment you need. So there's not a big cost other than the, the okay, the, the price of traps is, has gone up a lot since I've been a kid. But now the price of fur has gone up. and uh, you can actually probably pay for your gas and make a little, and it's just a very enjoyable sport. Uh, it is hard work. You have to, you know, you're not going to be a trapper after a 30-minute seminar, but, you know, support the Great Lakes uh, Fur Harvester. They're your closest organization up here that's a nonprofit for trapping. They have a show in Kinross that attend every year. Um, it's a great place to get your supplies, get a deal, and. Uh, it's in September. It's one of the last shows of the year. It's a small show. You can meet a lot of other trappers. So I've talked to a lot of you and uh, go visit it. Um, you'll really enjoy it. That's the closest ones. There's other shows in Michigan. And just check the web. Our website, PCS Outdoors, will tell you where you can go. But really encouraging. And even if you're not a trapper and you decide to go a different route, you know, if they take away trapping, just like right now you can't buy ammunition, the first thing they're going to do if they take away trapping, the reason, my, my grandfather, when he came here from Canada, he, he was a hunter, a trapper, and a fisherman. There's plenty of people supporting hunting and fishing. Somebody's got to support trapping because if, they're going to, if somebody's going to try to make it go away, if people are losing reality in the cities, they just don't know. They don't know that there's forest from here to the other end of the world. They're still, they're still tying themselves to trees and you know there's there's a lot that they've lost the grasp of reality and so if trapping goes away so support support a trapping organization I, I belong to virtually every state organization um, you know I think you've seen my uh, ad campaigns and all the national trappers I'm in field and stream outdoor life uh, all these other state organizations have magazines I try to contribute there but you know, you can only do so much, and, and everybody, sh if you just do, you know, it'd make my day if one person became a trapper from this meeting and one went over where our booth was and went to those Great Lake trappers and uh, signed up. In fact, I challenge you, if you go to that booth, it costs, I think, $20 for an annual membership, I'll give you $20 in membership out of my personal pocket, not the company, to, to, 
or PCS Outdoor product to pay those guys for a membership. So if you need anything else while I'm here today, join the trapping organization. Um, they're not booting us out, so if anybody wants to ask questions, I'd be flattered to uh, answer them. So when you set your dirt holes, do you do like you prefer the bigger, bigger dirt hole or the smaller dirt hole? Like, um, mouse side bigger, or, okay. Yeah. When I'm in sand country, I prefer a big one. Okay, if I can't make that dirt sole set quick, I move in with a plastic bag. Obviously, the video will show the detail. In the video, I may take five by five minutes because in demo purposes, I'm describing. In fact, in the video, one time, I didn't even looper it out. Three times, I got my hand caught because I was showing the importance of bagging the traps. Well, it, when I'm really doing it, trapping, I set that set in two minutes. I've set all three in six minutes. I'm down the trail driving as fast as I can, and Raj can attest, I hit telephone poles, trees, and everything else. If you trap it with me, don't ride with move. them. <laughs> um, I got a lot of relatives that live in the city heavyweight, but this boy ain't ever going to go heavyweight. And I'm 50 years old. If you can find an 18-year-old that you think he can beat me across that field, let's do it, okay? And that's because I'm a trapper. It keeps you healthy, okay? So you got to work smart, safe, too, because that same thing I've learned over the years. True story floating down the river with the global one, okay? I should have quit in December. Up in the UP, I was floating a, a thing that took me all day, someone would pick me up. This is 15 years ago, okay? I got halfway through, I should have pulled them out the week before. Beaver in my canoe, everything else, fox. A blizzard hit in. We didn't have Google where you could predict the weather forecast back then, or, or the weather stuff. Well, the river froze. I'm stuck with the guy that never trapped before. My mom and dad had a restaurant up in the UP. He was a rabbit hunter and he thought it'd be interesting. As you can see, I can give a good spill. So I wanted somebody to carry the beaver because I was getting tired of carrying them that year. There was a lot of them around, the prices were low. So I was after the caster and the skulls. So basically uh, that young guy would never go trapping with me again. Anytime he seen me, he went the other way because I tell you what, walking out, when you're in the middle of the UP in that section to come out uh, after a night in the woods, it's not fun. So safety is a thing. But today we have, uh, um, what is it called where you check the weather? Weather.com. It'll tell you the forecast for seven days and the likelihood of that happening again is not going to happen. Did I answer your question or did I divert way off? Divert way off. But, uh, there's no way you got to have. Let's rest. Because I was always wondering, like, uh, I read the percussion game before that people like to prefer the bigger dirt road just like it was. More okay. Getting back right to it, and I won't sidetrack, yeah. but I like telling stories. Yeah, totally. Okay. So basically, the bigger dirt hole is when it's sandy and you can easily do it. Okay. Yeah. You modify to your environment. Okay. It's not natural to make a big dirt hole if the ground's hard. It's not feasible either. Why would you sit there in solid clay and spend a half an hour because John Shagman said you use a dirt hole this big? You really got to have common sense that your mom and dad taught you when you trap. You need to read. But don't, if something seems stupid, you're in a different environment than I told you or someone else and you have to adapt. Trapping is a skill and it's really how creative you can be. If you're an artist and you're creative, you'll be a good trapper, okay? You gotta think outside the box. I mean, it's like a bloodhound. I can take the blood, best bloodhound in the world, he's gonna trap, but it's only after experience and if he's got intelligence, he's gonna evolve into that perfect dog, okay? I also, my dad was an avid, hound hunter versus trapper and uh, subsequently that's why I was happy to see the development of the dog proof specific traps because now hound hunters and trappers can be friends because if we're responsible we set dog proof traps and that hunters aren't going to hate us anymore. So things are good but we have to communicate and everybody Everybody holds grudges and things like that. Hunters and trappers are, and we just need to be brothers, you know what I mean? And, and talk and communicate a ways to work together, you know? And unfortunately, I think the trappers and hunters are going to work together. Now, the question is, well, uh, political stuff, do we got to get booted? Good. I'm running dry talking. Thanks, everybody. And uh, I hold you the offer on the, uh, joining the thing. and. Uh, let's meet back over there. I'll give a few free videos and whatever if you want it. So. Our next